Jeremy, it's great to have you here today. Why is now a buying opportunity? Oh, well, simply because they've fallen pretty far and, and their business hasn't changed a whole heck of a lot. So uh, with regard to global payments, Visa, MasterCard, these are kind of the transaction railroads, if you will. So, I mean, their businesses are probably going to grow with economic growth. They're going to grow even faster than the overall economy. I mean, most of these, the earnings side could be 15 percent plus earnings on these growth. And we're talking about multiples that have severely come down since the summer. So now is the time, I think, to be getting very interested in these names. I think that 2022 is setting up very well for these stocks. Isn't there more competition in the space than ever, Jeremy? And it's amazing to see how all of the payment names are struggling. And Visa and MasterCard might not have had a lot to compete with over the past decade, but times are different. Buy now, pay later is a rival. Crypto is a rival, albeit one that's still a few more years off. Yeah, yeah. There's certainly more attention around the competitive landscape, I would say, is that, you know, buy now, pay later is certainly, but I mean, it's still a pretty minuscule portion of the overall transaction volume out there. And they still use some of the rails that Visa and MasterCard are doing. So, and then on the crypto side, I mean, that's used much more, in our opinion right now, as a trading mechanism rather than a transaction mechanism. So if you're going out and shopping, whether even that's e-commerce or in-person, you're still probably using the same payment rails you're doing for. You're swiping and you're doing the things that Visa and MasterCard gain a benefit from. But tell me why Buy Now, Pay Later won't see huge adoption. Because if it reinvents the network to include the seller, the retailer, and the customer instead of the traditional way, which includes a payment processor and the bank and the customer, you know, why wouldn't that be way more attractive to retailers? We've seen the numbers these BNPL systems are putting up, and they look pretty good from a retailer's point of view. Yeah, yeah, no question. And even if they continue to grow very well, it doesn't take away completely from what you're currently doing. So, I mean, even their adoption, let's say they double in the next couple of years, that market share is still probably only five or 7% of the total transaction volume out there. So I think there's space for everyone in this landscape, I think to a certain extent in that, you know, the damage we've seen in the stocks, especially, just aren't reflected in the businesses. And I don't think over the next two and three and five years, I think payments in general tends to move at a pretty glacial pace. You know, we don't change instantly, but we do change over time. And Visa and MasterCard and PayPal and even global payments, it's not like there's an incredibly large moat in buy now, pay later that they can't get involved in even currently where PayPal's already doing it and the other companies could get involved in as well. So I think they can be part of that ecosystem, still have the legacy component and still grow over an extended period in that, like I said, mid-teens range for the next five years. I am, uh, frankly, a little bit, Jeremy, skeptical of buy now, pay later. I think it feels faddish to me, but, but whatever. It is certainly uh, something to be considered here today. Of these four sort of legacy companies, is there one or are there two that you like best now? Yeah, I mean, we've always really liked Visa. I mean, if you look at the out years, the valuation has come incredibly down from where it's been in the past. Relative to the market, it's actually getting to near a discount, which never happens for Visa. So we really like that one. From a value perspective and the, the most potential for kind of rebound opportunity, I think that's global payments. I mean, if you look at valuation now, we're at sub 14 times. It's a sub, you know, zero point or there's a 10, 15 percent earnings growth there. So the multiple is actually below the earnings growth that we're looking at. So if from a value perspective over the next six months, if you want to play one of these spaces and saying who has the potential for the most upside, I think it's GPN, global payments.